Welcome students. Today we are going to discuss cycus, its morphology, anatomy and reproduction. As plant biologists, we are fortunate that an ancient order of gymnosperms has endured for nearly 300 million years. These plants, the cycadales, commonly known as cycads, are popular among horticulturists because of their elegant, pinnately compound leaves and giant cones. Cycads, once found worldwide, are today restricted to warm climates in both the new and old world. One probable explanation of why cycads have survived is that they are well fortified against environmental threats. They survive drought, fire and are remarkably resistant to pathogens and predators. Much of this endurance can also be ascribed to the biosynthesis of a variety of protective secondary compounds. Because of their old fossil records and primitive morphology, cycads are traditionally treated as the oldest or the basal most lineage among the five living groups of seed plants. Cycadales, coniferales, jingoales, nitales and angiosperms. The biggest genus among the old world cycads is cycus. Cycus is the most distributed genus of the order cycadales. Only six species of cycus grows wild in India, besides cycus circinalis, cycus pectinata, cycus rumphei, and cycus bedomi, which occurs wild in India. Cycus revoluta and cycus siamensis are such species which are cultivated generally in the Indian gardens. Cycus revoluta is the most generally cultivated cycus species of gardens. Now we will discuss external morphology of cycus. The plant which belongs to the sporophytic generation is differentiated into root, stem and leaves. The stem of the young plant is stout, almost tuberous and subterranean the top bearing a crown of spirally arranged leaves. The growth is very slow but it lives to a great age. In the course of time, the stem builds up into an aerial, thick, columnar, normally unbranched trunk from the smut of which arises a crown of large, fern-like leaves. It resembles in its appearance the tree fern or some palms. The older parts of the stem are covered with an armor of persistent woody leaf base. They closely cover the stem and fortify it. The stem bears adventitious buds at the base. They are large and are covered with scales. They are often called the bulbils and serve as a means of vegetative reproduction. The leaves are of two kinds, foliage and scale leaves. They are arranged in close spiral, succession alternating with each other. The alternating clusters of persistent leaf base of foliage and scale leaves are of different thickness and give the stem a ragged appearance. The scale leaves are brown and are far more numerous than the foliage leaves. They are persistent and protective in function. They cover the stem apex and offer protection to the young foliage leaves. The foliage leaves are large, compound and pinnately divided into many leaflets. They are peripinnate and the pinnae are closely set on the ratchets and are sessile. Some of the lower pinnae may be rather tough 
and leathery in texture in showing their xerophytic nature. The cycas leaves are extensively used for floral decoration. The pinni are linear in outline with a narrowed structure. The margin is curved downwards and inwards. The revolute margins of the leaflets has given the plant its specific name, Cycas revoluta. Each leaflet is traversed by a single midrib. Like the ferns, the ratchet is incurled and the leaflets are enrolled in the bud condition. The taxis is thus the circinate type. A new cluster of leaves is formed every year or every second year. In the interval, the succession is kept up by the production of scale leaves. The primary root persists and forms a tap root system. The main tap root may be long but usually it is short and thick. Some of the later roots give out branches which become apogeotropic, grow vertically upwards just below the ground level. They branch repeatedly to form dwarfed, dichotomously branched, coral-like masses. They are called the coralloid roots or coralloiza. They became inhabited by a blue-green alga, anabina, cycadacerum. The surface of the coralloid root is beset with lenticle-like aperture which suggests that they are respiratory in function. However, non-coralloid aerial roots are found in Cycas revoluta and Cycas rumpi. These are positively geotropic adventitious roots and grow out from the lower sides of young and old bulbils or leaf bases while still attached to that plant. Occasionally, these roots are branched. Anatomically, these roots are di or polyarch with wide codex, mixed parenchymatous pith and scattered xylem elements. Now, we will discuss anatomy of cycus. The young stem is irregular in outline because of the presence of numerous persistent leaf bases. Its internal structure is similar to that of a dicotyledonous stem. It is differentiated into epidermis, cortex, and vascular cylinder. Epidermis is the outermost layer covered with a thick cuticle. It is generally discontinuous due to the presence of persistent leaf bases. Cortex forms the major part of the stem and it is composed of parenchymatous cells rich in starch grains. The cortex is also traversed by several mucilaginous canals and several leaf traces. The inner wall of the mucilaginous canals is made up of radially elongated secretory cells. The innermost layer of the cortex is endodermis and it is followed by pericycle. However, both endodermis and pericycle are indistinct. In the young stem, the vascular bundle is very small in comparison to the cortex. There are many vascular bundles arranged in a ring forming an ectopholic siphonostyle. The vascular bundles are conjoint, collateral, endage, and open. The individual bundles are separated by parenchymatous medullary rays. The xylem is made up of tracheids and xylem parenchyma only. Vessels are however absent. The tracheids of protoxylem have spiral thickenings whereas metaxylem have scleriform thickenings. The phloem is made up of sieve tubes and phloem parenchyma. Companion cells are absent. In a transection of stem Numerous leaf traces can be seen in the cortical region. They are vascular strands. Every leaf receives four leaf traces. Of these, two arise on 
the same side as the leaf and they enter directly into the leaf. These traces are known as direct traces. The outer two arise opposite the leaf and passes the leaf after turning around the vascular cylinder. These traces form a girdle around the vascular cylinder. Hence, they are called girdle traces. Before entering the rachis, all the four leaf traces divide to form many strands and hence there are several vascular bundles in the rachis. There is a parenchymatous pith in the center of the stem. The pith cells are rich in starch and many pith cells also contain tanninous and mucilaginous substances. Now, secondary growth of the stem. The stem of cycas shows a normal secondary growth in early stages, similar to that of a dicotyledonous stem. Interfascular cambium strips evolved between the two vascular bundles join with intrafascicular cambium strips and such a complete ring of cambium is formed. The cambial ring cuts off secondary xylem on the inner side and secondary phloem on the outer side. Multiserate bordered pits are present on the walls of the secondary xylem. In addition to secondary vascular tissue, the cambium also produces well developed parenchymatous medullary rays. The cambial ring remains functional only for a short time and thereafter its activity ceases. It is succeeded by another cambium produced independently in the pericycle or the inner layers of the cortex. The new cambium like old cambium produces secondary xylem towards the inner side and secondary phloem towards the outer side. This cambium also becomes inactive after some time and is suspended by another cambial ring produced in a similar fashion. In Cycus pectinata, as many as 20 rings of cambium can be formed. Thus, the young stem of cycas, which is monoxylic, becomes polyxylic later on. Extrastellar secondary growth takes place by the formation of phallogen, which produces phalloderm on the inner side and phallum on the outer side. Now, we will discuss anatomy of cycas root. There are two kinds of roots in cycas. Number one, normal tap root and number two, apogeotropic coralloid root. Internal tissues of the normal tap root are differentiated into epibilima, cortex, and central vascular tissue. Epibilima is made up of a single layer of thin-walled cells. Some cells of epibilima give rise to hair. Cortex is multi-layered zone of thin-walled parenchymatous cells which are filled with starch. Certain tannin cells and mucilage cells are also present in this region. The innermost layer of the cortex forms endoderms. The endodermal cells are characterized by the presence of Casparian bands. Pericycle is multilayered and includes parenchymatous cells. Vascular tissue forms a central diog steel. The xylem is exarch and trichetes of the protoxylem have spiral thickenings and those of the metaxylem scleriform thickenings. The pith is reduced or entirely lack. The mature normal root shows secondary growth which starts by the formation of the cambium strips inner to the primary phloem strand. Coralloid roots are specialized apogeotropic roots which grow on the surface of the soil. The internal structure of coralloid roots is similar to that of normal roots, but the coralloid root cortex is differentiated into three distinct regions. Number one, outer cortex made up of compact polygonal cells. Number two, inner cortex of thin walled parenchymatous cells. And number three, middle cortex which produces algal zones. The algal zone consists of a single layer of loosely connected thin-walled and radially elongated cells. 
in the alveolar zone blue green algae like anabina nostoc and oscillatoria species occur which live symbiotically besides some fungi and bacteria for example pseudomonas azetobacter are also observed in this zone development of algal zone in the coralloid root takes place after the entrance of endophytic alga according to some investigators presence of algal zone is not a universal character of coralloid root coralloid roots show little or no secondary growth now anatomy of cycas leaf the leaf of cycas is large and compound the leaf has stout and woody rights and tough thick and leathery leaflets in a transverse section the rights is differentiated into epidermis hypodermis ground tissue and vascular bundles epidermis is the outermost layer and is covered by thick cuticle just below the epidermis is the hypodermis which are 2 to 3 layers in thickness on the adaxial side and many layer on the abaxial side usually the cells of hypodermis are colenchymatous ground tissue is parenchymatous and follows the hypodermis vascular bundles are arranged in inverted omega manner is the characteristic feature vascular bundles vary in their structure at the base center and apex each vascular bundle ensheathed within a single large sclerenchymatous sheath is open and collateral a single layered endodermis and one or many large pericycle surround the vascular bundle at the base the vascular bundle is endarched that is protoxylem remains towards the center the xylem develops centrifugally the phloem lies towards the abaxial side the cambium is present on the upper surface of the metaxylem a vertical section of the leaflet in the regions of midrib shows the following tissue number 1 cuticle number 2 epidermis number 3 hypodermis number 4 mesophyll tissue number 5 transfusion tissue number 6 vascular bundle number 7 primary transfusion tissue now we will discuss them one by one cuticle is the upper surface of the leaf it serves to check excessive transpiration epidermis forms the outermost cellular layer on both the surfaces of the leaflet it is protective in function and consists of single layer of thick walled parenchymatous cells the upper epidermis is continuous but the lower is punctured here and there with pits or stomata the stomata which are confined only to the upper epidermis are sunken and lodged at the bottom of these pits with overarching rings hypodermis forms a single layer of thickened cells on both sides immediately below the epidermis the cells of the upper epidermis are highly thickened it checks excessive transpiration and serves as a heat screen preventing overheating mesophyll tissue lies on both sides between the upper and lower epidermis it is differentiated into a well developed palisade layer on its upper side immediately below the upper hypodermis it functions as the main photosynthetic tissue its elongated columnar cells contain abundant chloroplast the lower part of the mesophyll which lies within the lower hypodermis consists of loosely arranged parenchymatous cells with scanty intercellular spaces between them the cells contain chloroplasts it is called the spongy mesophyll it functions as aerating and supplementary assimilatory tissue transfusion tissue lies on either side of the midrib between the palisade and spongy layers it is three cell 
thick zone of elongated colorless cells which run parallel to the leaf surface from the midrib to the margin. It constitutes the necessary transfusion tissue. The development of this tissue in the leaflet of sacus serves to compensate for the unbranched condition of the midrib as it probably serves as a lateral conducting channel for water. Vascular bundle consists of xylem facing the upper surface and phloem facing the lower surface. The later consists of sieve tubes and phloem parenchyma. It is in the form of an arc. The xylem consists of a mass of tracheids which are centripetal. There is a small patch of centrifugal metaxylem separated from the protoxylem by parenchymatous cells. The protoxylem thus occupies the center of the bundle. The bundle is therefore massage in character. Primary transfusion tissue occurs on the sides of the xylem mass and consists of tracheidal cells with bordered pits on the walls. It is connected on either side with the accessory transfusion tissue. Now we will throw light on reproduction in cycus. Cycus reproduces by means of vegetative and sexual reproduction. Vegetative reproduction takes place by adventitious buds or bulbils. They evolve in the basal part of the stem from parenchymatous cells of the cortex in the crevices between persistent leaf bases. The decurrent base of the bulbil is covered with scale leaves and a few foliage leaves develop from its center. It is a common method of propagation in Psyca cervoluta as male plants of this species usually do not exist in northern India and in their absence sexual propagation is not possible. Bulbils produced by male plants give rise to male plants and those developed on female plants give rise to female plants. In Psychus circinalis, vegetative propagation takes place by suckers which evolve from the roots. They grow horizontally in the ground from some distance and then form new plants. Now we will discuss sexual reproduction in Psychus. All living species of cycus are dioecious as male and the female structures occur on separate plants. The microsporophylls are aggregated into large compact male strobili or cones. The megasporophylls are loosely arranged. Now male strobilus. The male or staminate cone are born singly and terminally on the main stem. The apical growth of the stem is continued by the formation of the axillary bud at the base of the cone. It becomes the new stem apex. As it grows, the male cone is displaced to one side. The stem of the male plant of cycus is therefore a symposium. Dear students, this is all about the cycus. Thank you very much.